Thank you for all being here this early morning and uh, I'd like to invite you to a trip, to a flight with a guardian angel. So what would be if you could exchange the range of your senses, seeing, hearing, smelling, to get access to an augmented base of information? So consider what if you could access real-time data tailored to your personal needs? What if you could receive relevant information, smart advice from the complex environment around you? What if there is a personal assistant which helps you even if the situation becomes tricky and dangerous? In our concept of a guardian angel, we envision small, tiny little devices which are small and thus non-intrusive, which are autonomous and thus easy to use, and which are personal and under full control of their users and thus safe and trustworthy. The idea of guardian angels was actually uh, initiated by my fellow colleague Adrian Ionesco from EPFL. And now we are a consortium of 28 partners in Europe who actually define this vision and try to define the research which is necessary to achieve this vision. And actually, we are competing on European level for a so-called FET flagship project, which may allow us to pursue this research within 10 years once it's accepted. So these guardian angels are tiny little devices. In our vision, they are supposed to ease our life, to maintain our mobility and independence in case when we lose these kind of things due to health problems. And actually, uh, they also are supposed to make our processes and activities more efficient in terms of power consumption. Please follow me into a few scenarios. Guardian angels at work. Guardian angels are supposed to monitor concentration, stress levels of those professionals where who actually have to maintain concentration and, le and, and stress levels at a very, uh, concentration at a very high level and stress at a very low level to be safe in their operation. We can also monitor workers by their location, by body monitoring, and thus monitor them if they are working in risky and dangerous environments. Guardian angels in traffic. In public and private transport, drivers take benefit of additional sensors, telling them what happens around them, but also allows them to evaluate on their own capabilities to uh, drive. Guardian angels will be connected with other guardian angels and thus collect information, not just from inside or just close around the car, but also from the vicinity around the car. And guardian angels may even be connected to the internet, collecting information from urban and regional scales. So traffic management, traffic control may become more efficient. The drivers will receive information, not just from other cars, but also from pedestrians, carrying guardian angels, from bicycle drivers, or if you like, from kids on their way to school. Dangerous situations may be foreseen and uh, accidents and injuries could be avoided. Guardian angels in health. Guardian angels are supposed to monitor physiological data like blood pressure, oxygen concentration, uh, respiration activity. They may provide a comfortable life for those patients who suffer from um, chronic diseases, or they may help people who suffer from allergies, providing early warnings if people approaching areas where the allergens, like pollen, for example, are available. All right, so you may wonder now, what is he talking about, actually? Um, car manufacturers have already introduced driver assistance systems, glucose sensors, 
already support people suffering from diabetes. And smartphones, with all their capability of transmission on the near range through UMTS and GPS, are actually devices of seamless communication, position control, and connectivity. But all these examples which we know today are based on bulky devices. They are power consuming. Your smartphone needs to be recharged maybe every 24 hours. And they are thus are not convenient to use. The guardian angels are then focusing on what we call zero power smart autonomous systems, featuring sensing, computation, and communication beyond human aptitudes. Zero power, we are not violating physical laws. Zero power means, in combination with energy harvesters, these guardian angels will become autonomous even from batteries and rechargeable batteries. Energy harvesting. A lot of energy is around us. Radiation from the sun, mechanical energy from movements of bodies, temperature from bodies, all these can be collected to power these guardian angels. And having said this, we have to go now a little bit more into technology, analyzing what's necessary to achieve uh, these kind of autonomous low power systems. So guardian angels are centered around sensors and interfaces, computational means and communication transceivers. And we know pretty well what the state of the art power consumption of these systems are. And actually we have set goals which are a factor of 1000 below uh, the today's state of the art power consumption in these individual parts. And now, on the harvester side, actually, we also know what harvesters can do today. And we also set targets, which are a factor of 100 to 1,000, if you like, increase in efficiency of these harvesters. If all these comes together, then we are convinced that we can realize autonomous systems, which are zero power. So what does a factor of 1,000 mean, actually? As I already mentioned, your smartphone needs to be recharged every 24 hours. So a factor of 1,000 means your, char your smartphone probably needs not to be recharged at all anymore because your battery lasts over the lifetime of the smartphone. Sounds ridiculous. I know that this is not possible with today's smartphones because we are still in the long-range communication and this requires power which certainly cannot be reduced, but just give you an idea of this efficiency. Another example, just consider a modern car taking five liters per 100 kilometers or running 50 miles per gallon. Factor of 1,000, it runs 50,000 miles per gallon and takes five milliliters per 100 kilometer. May also sound ridiculous to you, but you may probably uh, recall the world record in fuel efficiency, which was achieved five years ago by the PEC car. The numbers which are listed there, 19 milliliter per 100 kilometer fuel uh, efficiency in gasoline equivalents, I have to say, or 13,000 miles per gallon, are not that far away from these numbers which I extrapolated by this factor of 1,000. Of course, those kind of cars are far away from uh, yeah, cars which you would like to use every day for shopping or bringing your kids to the school. But system optimization under very well-defined boundary conditions can actually show the potential which is in these systems. And I'm quite convinced that these kind of ideas which are incorporated there will also uh, fertilize developments in cars. Back to IT. We are talking about guardian angels, which are supposed to be IT um, components. Today's transistors, today's mainstream transistors, are like race cars. Race cars are optimized for speed and size. They're running at full throttle all the time. And if not, they dissipate all the energy, energy by braking. So, today's technologies are similar. 
leakage power dominates over the power which is utilized for the primary function of a mainstream processor computation. We have a very similar situation if we talk about energy harvesters. Energy harvesters of today do not collect all the energy which is around. The efficiency is sometimes very low. So even here we have potential to improve the situation as we proposed by this factor of 100 mentioned before. So researchers are now ready to structure the projects which I like to pursue to achieve the scientific and technological goals which I presented before. And I just wanted to give you a few ideas what this could mean. So nano-electromechanical switches and tun tunneling field effect transistors may be very efficient new kind of switching devices. Spintronics, heterogeneous integration of different technology. Parallelism and multi-cores can save energy. In sensing, we talk about nanowires and carbon nanotubes. In harvesters, we talk about bio-inspired harvesters, or we can improve the efficiency by nanostructured surfaces. And on system level, hardware and software co-design is certainly of importance to optimize the whole system, and codes for reliability, data security, and zero power optimization needs to be developed. These are just a few keywords um, of topics which are on the horizon, which must be pursued to achieve the guardian angel vision. Let's focus on one example. As I mentioned, we might have 10 years uh, to develop these kind of systems. They may look like this. They are integrated systems comprising of sensing layers, computational units, transceivers, and energy harvesters. And if we now focus on one of these layers, the sensor layers, then uh, we believe today, we are convinced today, that nanostructures, nanowires, and carbon nanotubes are those kind of materials which help us to realize very power-efficient sensors. I'm not quite sure whether you can see the carbon nanotube, but believe me, there is a nanostructure between these two electrodes spanning from one side to the other. And since it's not perfectly visible on this SEM picture, I have an animation which shows you how a carbon nanotube looks like. It's a macromolecule comprised out of carbon atoms in a hexagonal arrangement, diameter typically one to two nanometer length if you like, one micrometer to five micrometers. The surface to volume ratio is very large. This makes them excellent sensors to interact with molecules, chemical sensors. The mechanical properties are excellent in combination with the electronical properties. So we have very high mechanical sensitivities which we can utilize for sensors. Just one example. Another example on, from the field of energy harvesters. Thermoelectric generators are around today based on foils, flexible foils, which can create energy out of a temperature difference. These foils are available in different sizes. Smaller ones, larger ones, may be already suited to be adapted to the body for guardian angels applications. But the efficiency is still low, 50 to 100 microwatts per square centimeter we expect from these kind of devices. And we believe that the guardian angel's requirement can be fulfilled only by the combination of different harvester techniques, thermal energy, vibrational energy, and solar energy. And then we can achieve this 10 milliwatt per square centimeter which were proposed earlier. Okay, the Guardian Angels Consortium, I mentioned this already, is a consortium of 28 partners from research institutions and uh, universities all over Europe. We have strong support uh, in this consortium by partners from uh, all major IT companies and small, medium-sized enterprises. 
We will identify competence centers for technology, for system integration, and for software. And in this consortium, of course, we also discuss topics from ethics and uh, from, or from, from the field, how we will impact the society with our new technology. So we are convinced in this consortium uh, that we actually will create guardian angels, tiny little zero power devices, which will help to preserve human health and improve quality of life. They, are, they will interconnect us with uh, the environment and thus allowing to become smart, energy efficient and safe. And actually all these applications which we are currently envisioning are kind of limited by our own capabilities and imagination. But we are quite convinced once this technology is there, zero power technology, a wealth of new applications will come up and uh, we will certainly see that our way of life is changing as it has been changed by all technology breakthroughs of the past. Okay, I hope I could make it a bit transparent what nanotransducers mean at the end, what guardian angels mean, uh, how we are set up to um, start this project, and I'd like to thank you for your attention.